Well, two very important processes have occurred over the last 30 years with this exponential rise of human pressures, but also extraordinary advancements in science. And, you know, sometimes in human history, you have these Copernican revolution moments or the Darwin, you know, natural selection of species moment that changes fundamentally the paradigm. And the scientific community is at that point now again, that we are now at this moment when we are impacting the whole planet. We are in a whole new geological epoch, the Anthropocene, and we need to understand the stability and that we are putting the stability of the entire planet at risk and that this is nothing less than a planetary emergency point. And, and when all this comes together, that is a moment where science needs to step out of its comfort zone and, and really communicate the new narrative, the new narrative of how we need to take care of the health of not only of ourselves, but of the planet for our own sake. And that's the new situation we're in. Well, the moment right now is that increasingly scientific evidence shows that we've entered the decisive decade for humanity's future on Earth. Not that we'll trip over some catastrophic tipping points on the 1st of January 2031, but because we are at risk of pushing the on buttons of irreversible changes if we push greenhouse gas emissions too far and destruction of nature too far. Secondly, we know that this is the year of, of unprecedented gatherings at the highest heads of state level for nature with the Kunming Biodiversity Summit, for food with the United Nations Food Summit, which we haven't had for 20 years, and with the climate top meeting uh, the summit in Glasgow, COP26 in November. All of this together means that this is the super year, which was supposed to be held in 2020, but was postponed because of the pandemic. Another crisis embedded in this Anthropocene reality we live in right now. Everything interconnected because we know that the pandemic is in itself a manifestation of the Anthropocene because it's overexploitation of nature in a hyper-connected world where trade and globalization makes this viral outbreak, a global disaster. And exactly the same way, if we push the global commons too far, we are at risk of sending invoices back that can propel and destabilize civilizations, communities, nations, economies across the entire world. That's why this is the moment. This is the moment to change direction, not, not nudging, but really in a transformative way. Well, of course, like everyone, we had to adapt ourselves to the realities of the pandemic and the inability to, to be at different field sites and different biomes and different commons around the world. But on the other hand, the, like the world at large, the film production has been adapting very rapidly, connecting virtually and, and, and running this in a, in a way that I would argue is almost a manifestation of uh, of a post-COVID reality where we need to collaborate very closely, but not necessarily be physically on site for every step we take. And it was fantastic in this film to have such broad collaboration with uh, scientific colleagues around the world who represented different biomes like Jason Box in Greenland and Elena Bennett on nitrogen in the lake systems in North America, to have that opportunity of uh, of working within a pandemic across the entire planet. Well, fundamentally, this film is about reconfiguring our whole relationship with planet Earth. So, of course, that's a big ask, but, but we are at that moment. We are at this moment where we need to reconnect our modern development, all our aspirations and dreams and, and, and what we you know, value in life, with the stability of the planet and to understand that we are now the big world, the big actors on a very small, very sensitive system that we need to take care of in its entirety. That, that's kind of the, the big picture issue. But the second hope I have with the film is that it will, you know, not only inspire particularly young people to go into the, the, the quest of solutions for a sustainable, prosperous, equitable future, but to really be inspired of practical solutions because the film does not only give the new insights of the risk landscape, but it also shows the window of opportunity 
to, to marry sustainability with positive outcomes. And I, I hope that I can also inspire a new kind of engagement and even higher engagement in sustainability at a moment where we're seeing so positive momentum in that direction. So this is a film that tries to tip over a positive momentum that we're starting to see.